We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on Patrick Paul, Miami Dolphins, left tackle. And I thought in this game was very kind of similar to week one with the inconsistencies, especially in pass pro. That's what we're mainly going to be focusing on in this video. But the main difference in this compared to the, the earlier uh, game, the preseason week one one, is that it was just to the extremes. Like his wins in pass pro were very, cons like very dominant and like he won them easily. Like he had a lot of wins and it was made to look easy, but his losses were like really bad and uh, did not play them well at all and got beat like very, very quickly. Like when he was getting hands on people, he won those reps very easy. He has the athleticism, the play strength, the length. He's just a physical specimen to win those reps. But when he was losing, it was when he was going too wide outside of his landmarks, not the best depth, not taking the best angles. And then you losing to the inside corners, counter moves, uh, did that a lot. The running game, not as dominant this time around, but I would say overall, not nothing too like concerning. Like mostly just like he had one dominant play and then the rest of it was just like pretty average. But if you watch him, it was a lot of wins in pass protection, but when he lost, he lost very, very badly, especially like on his vertical in 45 degree sets. Um, so let's, you know, start to break this down. Here we get to see him out in space on the run play. This is like definitely his most dominant run play rep. A guy of his size should not be able to move like that, like on the pull. Now we'll see a play later on that's kind of a similar play call, but it's not as clean from him. But this is like the high level rep that it gets when you get him uh, free room like this. He takes a great angle. Like he hasn't always looked this dominant on space. Like sometimes he looks a little unconfident when getting to the point of attack uh, kind of slows it down. But here he's just full speed squares this guy up and look at the leg drive finish. He blocks him off the screen like he pancakes that guy. Yeah, so that was just a completely dominant rep from Patrick Paul. And then after that is, you know, this first play in pass pro. This, you know, wasn't the first play. It just came, you know, later in the game. But this first play, we're going to watch in pass pro. This is where he oversets. Uh, we're going to watch it after this, you know, dominant run rep. That plays so good. Like, really, really impressive. He just gets slightly out of position. Not the greatest out of his stance. Like, he takes one kind of step there and then takes a false step forward and then gets crossed up. Like, that's just poor technique. Uh, like really really not great stuff out of a stance the other ones out of a stance are actually pretty clean like his first step right there is fine then he like takes this weird step forward gets out of position like it's like he feels it happening but doesn't try to redirect himself so he's got to be better because he has great range athleticism length he doesn't need to overset to win the outside like he can win to the outside just by carrying people past the line of scrimmage so this depth that first step out of the way he does get face masked here to be fair like right but the initial part of this play is still horrible. But right there, he does get face masked and he's not able to give himself a chance to recover. Like he gets pulled down. So that is something to take notice of. I want to point that out. But like the initial part is just really ugly. Crosses over his feet, he's doing karaoke. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, isn't able to recover to get back to the inside. And that happened a few times throughout this game. This was obviously the most negative because it turned into the, to the strip sack. He was able to play like pretty cleanly after this. Like you can see him much more comfortable here in his kick step. You know, two little movements there. Doesn't... Uh, get crossed over like the base could be a little bit better right there but he's not taking false steps forward like when he has to, like look when the guy tries to win around the edge he just wins with ease he gets control of it and then he just does like that shuffle he's bending bending at the knees playing with good overall pad level things like that he can carry guys past, past the quarterback with his skill set I think that's the problem is he's a very long player too so sometimes it you it's gonna be a little like trouble if you get over the top you to like change direction back to the inside but carrying on the outside definitely fits that more like skill set better so like it really just comes down to not oversetting and things like that like here's another example like you're trying to maintain a half man relationship you want like your outside shoulder to be like in the middle of this defender if you get to the outside of him or even with him that's not good uh here he's even probably oversetting still a little bit but he's at least once he starts to do that, he's pretty much engaged with the defender. He just want to, don't want to overset too quickly and give up that spot. Uh, he does have a little chip there to the outside, but then once he gets engaged, like, he wins with hands. Like, this guy's not... If he gets hands on 52, that guy's never going to win a rep. He, he was just losing when he was not able to get hands because of that initial part. Like, here's another play. Uh, I like this one where he gets to be a little more aggressive in his sets. I think this is something the Dolphins should do a decent amount overall just with their, their pass protection. But I kind of like this for Patrick Paul getting engaged pretty early. It kind of forces him to attack and get hands on. And it's much more difficult to, you know, win with your hands versus him. Like even this guy trying to use the long arm, you know, Paul gets two hands on him. His hands are still a little bit wide. It's nice to see him reset those hands. And now he's just 
Mirrigan matching his feet is very good. Lower half, just the whole way. Very difficult to win on those types of plays. Here's another rep where he kind of just loses to the inside. He misses that initial punch. He doesn't mean overset here. This one's not as bad on the initial part. The other one, he definitely overset. This one, he starts to get a little bit too wide, but he's at least, he's not in a bad spot to recover. He just lunges. He lunges out. He's kind of bending at the waist right there. A little poor technique. Uh, he kind of shoots and just misses. He's got to be able to redirect his feet at this point. Uh, give himself a better chance to get back to the inside. The ball's coming out, but that's another rep where he loses getting to the inside, oversetting. Like, he's not in a bad spot. Like, he's in a good spot right here, where exactly where he needs to be. He just keeps floating to the outside. He gets even with the defender. That's not what you want to do, like, right? There, he's not in a terrible spot. Right there, he takes himself out of the play. Misses with his hands. Uh, bends a little bit at the waist. Just poor technique. It's still things he's working on. But when he wins, it's very, very clean. Like, right here. You can see he, he's so smooth and explosive on that initial part of his stance. But now he's staying. Like, this one's good. I like he's staying patient. Bending at the knees. He oversets a little bit. But he's able to recover. He uses that inside hand. You have to have some inside hand stopping power. Which I think, you know, can be some trouble for longer guys at time. But here he's able to recover and then bring his feet back across. So that's just something he really, really needs to work on. It's uh, is those moves back to the inside. Because when they try to get even with him, bull rush him, or went to the outside, Paul has looked very dominant in a lot of those reps. He's just carrying people. His hand placement looks better. It's uh, a lot more smooth. So that is kind of like the problem. Here's another rep where he just easily wins. Get out of his stance. Get engaged pretty quickly. The guy who just works down the middle of you. Makes it easy on Paul, and he's just got much better knee bend, uh, much better just, you know, play strength, contact balance, all of those things that you want to see. Like, uh, he's playing with just better pad level, better hands to stay engaged, and then he's shuffling, and his base is good too. Like, the base is all there. He just looks way more comfortable when they're trying to work to the outside like that. Um, Like this too, like, feels like he mixes up. He was mixing up his pass sets here. You can tell on this play, like, Sometimes he gets a little out of control, but I don't mind him like giving you a little something here because it almost feels like that step forward gets this guy to commit his pass rush move kind of early, and Paul explodes out of his stance, and he's not in a horrible position here. Like he's maintaining that half man relationship, and then he starts to get a little wide once the guy's into like almost into his chest, so that's you know that's fine. Uh, and he baits his hand out here. He like gets his hand. This guy tries to hit the cross chop. Paul, this is like the. This is like the good thing about being patient and being wide with your hands is when you get them to commit like that with your lower half, then you've won the battle. Now he gets engaged. So that's just a high level rep. Uh, won that pretty much the whole way there. Like he had a lot of them where he's just winning play after play. Love this because now we get to see someone try to win with speed to power. And look, his hands are wide. He's not in a great spot. He gives up his chest completely. And when you're like this, it's very difficult. But he's so powerful. He's able to anchor so quickly, get his hands back into a better spot. Uh... Skyler, I don't know what he's doing. Skyler thinks he's probably going to give up. Skyler just escapes a clean pocket for some reason. Uh, so gives up a pressure there. But Paul plays this rep uh, so well with the anchor. Like, that's so impressive from, like, a physical standpoint. This is stuff you just can't teach. And, like, the other things that you could teach to make it better, he, like, you obviously can teach those things, uh, the technical part of the game. So that's kind of nice. Here's just another example of him getting out of stance, being very smooth. I love the initial part of these plays. When he's not crossing over, his base is better here. He's explosive out of his stance. He looks just way more uh, like just a better athlete than every other person on the, the front here. Uh, and he's just in control. His hand placement's good. He's just carrying him base, bending at the knees, playing with pretty good leverage and pad level for a guy of his size. And he just wins that rep so, so nicely. Here's like these same guys. They're trying to, if they try to get hands on him and win with power, he just wins. Very, very nicely. Even though he gets isolated here. They slide to the right. So he's just one-on-one. -on -one. The guy gets engaged with him very quickly. Paul, look at this. His feet are getting crossed over. He's not in a good spot. Like, he should lose this rep from where he is. But he's instantly able to get his feet back into a better spot. Recover. Anchor. All those things. Things you just can't teach. And when he was engaged with people, he won every single rep when he was actually, like, engaged. When his hands, like, when he got two hands on a guy, he won very, very simply. Uh, here's another example of it. He just needs to be better with his placement. I know, like, there's the whole get your hands wide, but it feels like Paul is the only, like, I know they can teach that, like, uh, play with wider hands, and sometimes Armstead does it too. But it seems like Paul is the only one on the offensive line that does it 
every rep. So I don't think, I still think he should be better with his hands inside the chest. It will help him in a lot of scenarios. You need to be able to mix things up. You need to have different moves in your bag. You need to be able to play with independent hands. Use a one-handed strike. It's how you keep people off guard. Uh, but Paul was just consistently winning. Curry is using a drag hand, thinking he, 70, he will help 79 to the inside. He has a little bit of a chip help here. Then give it back to the outside. Patience gets engaged with 90. 90 never has an absolute chance. He's, like, as I was saying, when Paul got hands on these people, uh, they never had, like, literally never even got close to the quarterback. He literally lost all of his reps. Uh, when he just like completely whiffed or oversets. Uh, here's a nice... I like when he got super isolated like this. Like He got isolated. A lot of space for them to work with. They try to win to the outside. Don't try to win to the outside uh, arc on Paul because he's going to win that. I feel like his outside hand is much uh, stronger also. like It has better stopping power. Like j Maybe it's the placement of it that also plays into it. And he's also just very comfortable with that range length. Having these guys just move them past the quarterback. He's very comfortable. Uh, in those areas, this was the negative run rep. Now the reason, the difference, main difference between this is they try to uh, crack back, and he kind of basically runs into his receiver, which slows him down. That's why he doesn't look as explosive out in space here. So like, it that messes up the whole play initially. But I actually don't know what he's doing after this. Like it didn't even look like he just looked so uncomfortable. That's the thing is like, I don't think it's like an effort thing. Like I think he's still trying here, but he just didn't know. I think it was a a mental thing, like not knowing exactly how he should play this, not having a great feel. So when something's thrown off, uh, he wasn't able to cover. He just kept running sideways, like wasn't trying to get upfield. He's got to know when uh, the timing of the play is thrown off like that. He's got to be able to get upfield because the running back's already past him. <laughs> like, And then Paul never touches a soul. That, so that play was a little weird. Like we obviously saw that first play, like what it's supposed to look like, about as high level of a play as it gets for an offensive lineman in those scenarios. But then that play just looked super ugly. Obviously it's thrown off, but got to be a little bit better. Here's the other negative rep. This one isn't as bad as the other two. Like, it's not necessarily that he oversets here. Like, there's not a lot of room for this guy to work back to the inside. He just gets too even with this edge defender, so he's got to be able to, you know... He's also not showing any hands. Like, this is the problem when you have your hands like this. You're trying to play with super late and patient hands, and you don't have a super great independent hand. So when they try to work to the inside on him, he struggles to, you know, use just one hand, and that inside hand specifically, and now he's wrapped around him. Uh, he at least gets better bringing his feet this time to like try to recover and get back in a decent spot. But he kind of hooks this guy up, could potentially get called for holding. Uh, he does at least, you know, it doesn't get called for holding, so he at least does a decent job of not making it like super blatant. Uh, but that's just another rep where he gets slightly out of position, and you can see the clear weaknesses to his game when using those in independent hands and having just better uh, footwork in the lower half. Uh, so we can now really see what his clear weaknesses are when he you know, got hands on and they were trying to win to the outside or trying to win down the middle of him. Guys tend to do that. They try to win with speed to power. He just won those reps instantly. They could not overpower him. Clearly looked like, in those situations, he looks like a man amongst boys, especially against these level of players when they tried to do that. But some of those reps were so ugly. This was probably his most dominant rep, especially in the running game, just overall in the game. But And pass prote protection, when he won, he won very cleanly, won very easily, but then he had plays like this. Uh, he did get face mask, which makes it look even worse than it when it than it probably was gonna be. But that uh, initial part of the play is just really, really bad. So L overall, I think we've seen a lot of positive pet from Patrick Paul in the preseason. We were definitely ex I was expecting to see growing pains. I was not a super huge fan of the pick, but I do have to give him credit where credit is due. Like he has played better than expected for the most part. Like those plays where he loses, that's like the problem that I had with him was the consistency thing getting to your landmark. I will say overall his technique has looked better. There are things he definitely needs to improve upon. And from a play-to-play -play basis, he looks better than he did at Houston. Uh, and he should be fine with development because he, he's he's a smart kid. He's very athletic, has the physical skill set, and he seems like a high-effort player. You have to be a, a guy that puts in the work off the field to get better uh, when you're this type of guy that needs development. I think that's going in his favor. And then um, when it comes to Paul is he he doesn't have to play this season he's not forced into playing time we probably after this preseason we might not see him for quite some time unless there's multiple injuries so if you guys are the video make sure to like subscribe and I'll see you guys in the